chemical signs acids bases and salts in that we are in the neutralization what is neutralization what is neutralization we are discussing about that one the reaction of an acid with base to give salt and water is known as neutralization yes in the neutralization examples we have seen acid plus base gives rise to salt and water yes salt and water this is very important children this is in the examination what is neutralization means you have to write the definition and the example basic formula here acid plus base gives rise to salt and water if you remember this any acid you can take any base you can take that salt and water that will give suppose the example you are taking hydrochloric acid sodium hydroxide gives rise to sodium chloride and water yes that is a hydrochloric acid is in the yes acid that is in the aqueous state sodium hydroxide aqueous and sodium chloride is also in the aqueous that is water is in the liquid state same way if you are taking another example metal oxide yes metal oxide if you are taking metal oxide plus acid gives rise to salt plus water you are going to this copper oxide plus hydrochloric acid that is cupric chloride plus water you are going to get now this is about that what neutralization this is about that neutralization we are discussed while saying about yesterday small activity was there yes what is that activity today you are going to discuss about that one take a test tube yes take a test tube yes in that test tube what you do take Two ml of two ml of sodium hydroxide solution means two ml of sodium hydroxide solution. Okay. Then add add to the test tube add phenethylene indicator add phenethylene phenethylene. Phenethylene. Phenethylene indicator. Yes. Phenethylene indicator. Yes. Add two drops of one or two drops of this indicator to this. Yes. What will happen to this? You see that. Yes. To this. Well, you are taking the dilute sodium hydroxide. Here, well, you are taking and two drops you are adding. The what is the color will be changes? The color will be changes to pink color. What is the changes? It's the color will be changes to pink color. What you do to this? Yes, the color will be changes. Then to this solution, add add two three add. Drop by drop, add. Drop by drop. Drop of HCl, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. Observe what will happen to this. Yes, after adding few drop, the color will be changes. What will the color will be changes to that colorless? It will be color will be changes. From this, what do you think that? From this, you can observe that that is sodium chloride and the hydrochloric acid both the reactant and form in the salt. Sodium chloride and hydrochloric acid forms and what? That is salt. You are forming salt and water. You are going to get that is means it will be neutralize that color. Means the color will be disappear. Again, you add two more drops of the sodium hydroxide. The color will be changes. Ah, uh, see, yes, the color will be changes. You see that. You can notice that. Means it it will be neutralize the substance that the acid to base or base to acid. Yes, it is the activity of you. Yes, neutralization. Yes, that is about the neutralization. Now, next, if you have seen that, what do you acids have the common in that? What do that acids will be common in that acids? Acids will be having that. If you have seen that hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, yes, 
sulfuric acid, nitric acid, all that acids we have seen in that the hydrogen will be common in this. Hydrogen ions will be the common, means that is the H is the common, that is hydrogen should be, that is common we have seen. Next, if you have seen that about that, next uh, the preparation of solution of the glucose, alcohol and hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. Here, from these acids or glucose or alcohol, yes, the current will be produced or the flow of electrons should take place or not, we will check. Yes, the either the ions will be disassociate or not, we will see in this, in this diagram. Yes, now we will see this. Dilute hydrochloric 
acid of dilute hydrochloric acid now see this what are the apparatus required we have seen here first one is a beaker second one is a rod graphite rods graphite rods graphite rods third one is beaker graphite rod three dilute hydrochloric acid these are the connecting wires connecting wires connecting wires five that is a bulb six it is a ac plug yes now all these are the required apparatus now it is dilute hydrochloric acid now it is what you are doing now first of all you are taking about the now see here prepare a solution of the glucose alcohol hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid we are taking this as a hydrochloric acid first you are taking as what hydrochloric acid yes we are taking the first as the hydrochloric acid now taking this hydrochloric acid whenever you are passing this through the current from the ac power plant here the hcl will be dissociated into h plus and h plus and cl minus will be dissociated and the flow of electron will be taking place due to that the bulb will be close yes due to that what happened that bulb will be close yes now this says that what is it is saying the dissociation of this molecules yes h plus and cl minus h plus and cl minus yes h plus and cl minus h plus is that cation h plus is a cation and cl minus is that now we are see the molecules are the dissociated through the electrodes of that what that is h plus and the cl minus h plus and the cl minus and the flow of electrons will take place and yes the bulb will be closed whenever the ac power ac plug is on yes this is the our experiment showing about what h plus then this h plus and cl minus the molecules are dissociated in that acids we are taking the like that we have to re repeat the experiment with that alcohol yes alcohol or glucose c12 h 22 o h c6 c6 h12 o6 yes we are taking that glucose Yes, C six H twelve H twelve H twelve O six. Yes, glucose. Or another form is there. C twelve H twenty two O O eleven will be there. Glucose, fructose, all will be there. Whenever you have taken that liquid, yes, taken this liquid here. Yes. Yes, whenever you are taking that glucose liquid, here you are taking what is that here? Here you have to replace that form here that glucose liquid. Glucose liquid you have to replace. If you are replacing glucose liquid, what will happen here? What will happen means the H plus and Cl minus will not be there. The molecules will not be disassociated. Yeah, the current will not flow through this. The bulb will not glow. The bulb will not glow from this. The bulb will not glow from this experiment. We are saying that whenever if you are taking the glucose, yeah, the molecules will not be disassociated. The current does not flow through this, and the bulb will not glow. Yes. This is a very important experiment showing that the molecules are 
disassociate whereas previously we have seen that here hydrochloric acid we are taken then we are disassociated to H plus and Cl minus whereas if you have glucose you are taken it won't disassociate these are the neutral solution these are what neutral 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 solution it won't disassociate the molecules the molecules will not be disassociate if you are taken that glucose Yes, especially. Now, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, you have to take it and repeat that. H2SO4, H2SO4. Yes, if you are taking that H2SO4, this is an acid that will be disassociate. H plus and the SO4, SO4 is there. That will be disassociate forming it. Yes, the acid is going to, yes. That is H plus and sulfuric acid disassociate forming the current will be flows and it will be glows. Yes, it will be glows. Means each time, means whenever you are doing the experiment, it's an acid or a base, it's going to react. It's going to react and disassociate the molecules. Yes, it's going to react and disassociate the molecules. Whereas uh, if you are taking that glucose, it won't disassociate. Yes, this experiment says about that. What is that experiment conclude? Yes, that. That experiment is conclude that the glucose and alcohol solutions of the bulk did not glow. Yes, glucose and the alcohol does not glow to that solutions. Glucose and the alcohol does not glow. Yes, indicating that the absence of H plus ion solution for these, yes, for these H plus ions will be absence. H plus ion will be absence. Yes, for this they are absent for this H plus ions. Whereas for this acids and the acids will be that will be disassociated with H plus and the Cl minus ions. Yes, the acidity of the solution is attributed by H plus ions. From this, we are saying about the acidity of the solution also. H plus ion solution. Here, H plus ion solution acidity, how you are saying? If you are taking that more concentrated solution, we are going to get that more current needs. Yes, if you are taking less dilute, you are taking dilute. If you are taking that 30% of HCl and remaining water you are taking 30% dilute you are taking means you are going at a little bit light. If you are going to get more concentrated that easily that molecules also will be disassociated and the more you are going to get. Yes, that you have to see whenever you are handling with that acids you have to lot of care you have to take directly whenever you are going to get that acids it may be it will fall on the hands, it may be burnt also. Yes, with care we have to do this experiment. With care we have to do this experiment. From this experiment, we are knowing about that what? That we are knowing about that molecules will be disassociated. Next will be what? The knowing about that concentration. Yes, we are knowing about that what? That the substances which does not presence of H plus ions also. Yes, that is alcohol and the glucose will not be present this what H plus ion. From this we will stop here spread. Now we are going to next to what the basis. For the basis we will. Yes, now this is about that what? H plus ions disassociation. See the diagram children. See the diagram. See this diagram. Note down that the diagram for the diagram for this hydrochloric acid. Now, I'll say that homework, yes, 
what is the homework means what is the neutralization give examples Okay so that's why 
we are doing different types of life activities in our daily life so for that we are releasing heat energy and most of the heat energy we are releasing through respiration process okay so we are releasing heat energy outside that's why we must to gain heat energy we must to gain heat energy then what happens here losing energy equals to gaining energy then our body maintain normal and constant temperature okay so if you are doing vigorous exercise what happen we will release more heat energy okay and our respiration rate is also very high so here what happens na na heat energy we are releasing more and respiration also will be more so that's why the energy which is present less in our body so at that time our muscles will get pain why because if we have less heat energy in our body one substance is produced what is the substance yesterday we discussed lactic acid okay lactic acid which is produced by less amount of heat energy okay if we are doing vigorous exercise we are releasing more heat energy okay and our respiration means breathing rate also high at that time so our body release more heat energy outside then we have very less heat energy inside of the body at that time our cells produce lactic acid okay this lactic acid is responsible to cause muscle pain the lactic acid which is responsible to cause muscle pain in our body so that's why then sometimes we will get muscle pain but after some time we are coming to uh, rest position so if the respiration rate is low in the human body there is accumulation of lactic acid is present this lactic acid leads to muscle pain okay so that's why if we can take more energy food if you are doing yoga exercise we can have we have more energy the energy which is stored in the form of atp okay if you are taking good food if you are doing daily yoga and exercise we have more energy the energy which is stored in the form of atp okay when the energy is less this atp molecule provide energy so that's why we are not getting muscle pain so children that's why you must do yoga and exercise then you will get more energy that energy is stored in the atp at that time if you will do very hard exercise if you will run more time then also you cannot get muscle pain okay so this is about what ana from this topic what you understood living organisms also produce heat energy while we are doing vigorous exercise and while we are releasing more breathing okay so energy is very important to our body to perform different types of life activities the energy which we store in the form of atp so this atp gives energy and uh, with the help of atp our total body parts will work actively so what happens here nana if you are burning glucose it releases heat energy so if you are doing vigorous exercise or if you are breathing the more heat energy is released from the body so our body contain less heat energy so that's why accumulation of lactic acid is causes muscle pain okay so that's why athletes athletes they are doing daily yoga and exercise means they will get more energy okay there is no accumulation of lactic acid in their body that's why they cannot get muscle pains okay children so like substances all living organisms produce heat energy this heat energy is very important okay so how much energy we are releasing that much energy we must to gain through yoga and the exercise then only we maintain normal body temperature okay then only we maintain normal body temperature this is about what nana heat energy produced 
by living organisms okay this evolution in gaseous exchanging system okay Yeah. 
the organisms take respiration process these are called cutaneous respiratory system for example amphibians which animals lives on land and in water the animals are called amphibians for example frog frog is an amphibian animal okay so which organisms take respiration with the help of skin the organisms are called cutaneous respiratory system for example amphibians fourth one very important pulmonary respiratory system okay so lungs we are taking respiration through our lungs so which organisms takes respiration with the help of lungs the organisms are belongs to pulmonary respiratory system fourth one is what the pulmonary respiratory system if the respiratory system which is takes place with the help of lungs that is called pulmonary respiratory system for example reptiles boats
system explain different types of respiratory system this is four marks question okay this is very important read about different types of respiratory system present in the living organisms okay hope you understand this video thank you good morning children good morning everybody so production and employment so listen here we are discussing about the production and employment i told you in the previous class what is production and employment and also i told you about the various economic systems about the various economic systems you should remember the various economic systems means three are there primary sector secondary sector service sector primary sector secondary sector and service sector and listen primary sector what will come agriculture mining fishing forestry these are called primary sector and the secondary sector large scale industries medium scale industries small scale industries all the manufacturing one i told you in the previous class and the next one we going to discuss about the service sector you see service sector is what they will not manufacture the goods but they will provide the services one is transportation communication and another one is see banking finance and also lawyer doctor engineer lawyer doctor engineer they are called as service sector in the next one here you see now we will discuss about that one in the previous class also i told you here you see the women working in the house she will not come into the economic activity she will not come into the economic activity she will wash the clothes she will do the wages she will look after children husband everything she will but that will not come in the economical activity women when she is doing outside work that is calculated in the economic activity that is calculated in the gdp i told you the gdp gross domestic product gross domestic product is closely relation with the working people i told you in the previous class what gdp gross domestic product is close relation ship with the working people in our country that means you see in 2011 i told you census census means in the previous class i told you for every 10 years for every 10 years we will take a data means information for every 10 years we are going to take the information that is called as data what we will take we will take the population we will take the literacy we will take male and female male and female education everything will take so that is our data so according to census and we will take working people who are working who are not working listen properly working and who are not working also will take so listen here now according to 2011 according to 2011 12 and million people were there according to 2011 12 and million people are there from the 460 million people are working 460 million people are working or 460 million people are engaged in different productive works 460 million people are engaged in different productive works productive works means they will work if they will work if they will they work they will get income with that income the they will survive their life they will survive their life that is about the one and also here one is there what is that one gayatri a case study is there about the gayatri we are going to study about the gayatri but before that we are going to discuss in agriculture in agriculture lot of this girls lot of these girls unemployment is happening what is happening this girls unemployment is happening what is this girls unemployment this girls unemployment is what you see how much required members that much only they should work but more than the required members are working in agriculture and that is called as this girls unemployment what is it means now suppose one example i tell you one example i tell you two acres of land is there two acres of land two members are enough to do work two members are enough to do work in the two acres of the land but still extra three members are working 
the three members extra three members are working in the same field so the three members are called as disguised unemployment more than the required more than the required people are working means that is called as disguised why because in the two acres of land two acres of the land because today modernization became technology became so two acres one is enough but i'm telling you two so two are enough to do the two acres of land but three members are doing in that so what happens this girls and gentlemen you can they ask you the filling the blank where you can see the this girls and gentlemen we can see the this girls and gentlemen in the agriculture field in agriculture field this girls and unemployment we can see why because one two acres are there means total family members will do the work there only totally family members total family members are engaged and they will do the work there only so just two are enough so here what is happening unemployment is happening unemployment and this i tell you unemployment why you see here if two members are working in the two acres of land same production will come 80 bags of paddy will get. If five members are working in that, same 80 bags will get. Why? Because one acre 80 bags of. You see, one acre 40 bags of paddy will get. In one acre 40 bags of paddy will get. Two acres 80 bags will get. So you see here, two members you work with, you will get the production 80 bags. If you work five members also 80 bags. There is no change in the production. If more members are there, more production, no. So that's why it is called as disguised unemployment. You should know that the compulsory filling the blank will come. Where you can see the disguised unemployment, you can see that in agriculture only, in agriculture sector, you can see that why? Because the people who are the people who are working more than the requirement, the people who are working more than the requirement is called as. And this girls and women. And one thing I tell you today, you see, one example, one one case study is there about Gayatri. You see, Gayatri is having two acres of land, and this two acres of land is there. Gayatri is having two acres of land, but what is they are doing? Two acres of the land is cultivated by five members, four brothers and one sister. Four brothers and one sister they are working in the agriculture. Four brothers and one sister they are working in agriculture. It is called as disgust. Why? Because now only in the two acres of land, two members are enough. Acres of land, two members are enough. But three members totally, the four, five members are working in that. Why? Because they don't know other works except agriculture. That is the one reason. Why? Because they know only the agriculture work. They don't know other work, so that's why everybody are engaged in the agriculture. Total four brothers or sisters they are doing agriculture, agriculture work. But with this, what happens? If five members are working, means any production increases. With the five members are working, means production from 80 bags it will become 90 bags. No, it is impossible. So only 80 bags only will come. But here, what is happening? Three members waste in the field. So these three members, what they should do? The three members, we should go out of from this one. They also should just leave this agriculture, and they should see the other work. If these three members went outside and they did a work outside, if they did other work, means what will happen? You know, what happens? You know, if their income is increased in their house, income is increasing, income is increases, but they are not doing. You see now, if they see other work. The three members went outside and they saw the other work means their increase of income will be there in their family. So increase of the income will be in the family, but they are not doing. Why? Because government should see. Not only like Gayatri, you see, not only like Gayatri in India, lot of the people are there. Not only I am taking only Gayatri, but like Gayatri family, lot of families are there. More than the required number, they are doing the work in agriculture field. So that that should be solved by the government, and government should see some welfare users. And another one I tell you, these people are doing only one time crop only. When the rains are there, when the rains are there, that time they are doing the agriculture. And why? Because 
they are not having kennels there so one time only they are so this problem is happening so and i am going to tell you about this welfare measures of course government should see this one and here what is the study three are based we are based here only two members can do this one that is our guide you are only today what is happening modern and modern technology came modern technology has came now what happened with one girl only two acres can why because they can use a tractors they can use a combined harvesting machine harvesting it will only keep a seeding it will only thrusting it will, it will cut the it will cut that one sowing also will do machines today machines came tractors are there tractor is today everybody are using the modern machines to pluck the crop they are using the tractor machinery to cut the crop harvesting machine it is there to cut that one so one person is required but four members are basically cuter if these four members went and did outside they will get extra income and their family the income of their family will be good stand of living will be good that's about that one and next one you see we are going to discuss about the organized sector and unorganized sector listen what is organized sector and unorganized unorganized sector i'll tell you before that i'll tell you one example i'll tell you organized sector and unorganized sector meaning i'll tell you organized sector means the persons who are government employees organized organized sector means the persons who are government employees and the persons who are working in a software software companies and big corporate companies they will come under the organized sector once again organized sector means the persons who all who are or government employees the government employees and the software engineers and corporate companies whatever corporate companies who are working corporate companies this all will come in the organized sector and unorganized sector what is unorganized sector unorganized sector means labor workers all the workers like casual workers and like a daily wage workers labor all the labor daily daily wage workers casual workers casual workers means painters electricians plumber and this are plain painters plumbers and electrician these are all casual workers and laborers all this will come in unorganized sector for example i tell you see today i tell you today i tell you one thing i tell you primary sector will come in the unorganized sector you see the farmers who are working also will come in the unorganized sector only unorganized sector only you should keep in your mind primary sector also will come in unorganized sector we can call that unorganized sector also the persons who are doing agriculture the persons who are doing agriculture and the labor work they all come in unorganized sector only today i tell you you see today organized sector only you see organized sector you see only 8 percent only 8 percent are there in india organized sector means only 8 percent of the people are government employees in india you see you see today lot of people are doing government jobs lot of people are doing corporate jobs but total india if you compare the percentage 8 percent only how much less 8 percent only organized sector you know that organized sector means what government employees and 92% 92% are unorganized sector you see in india how much 92% are unorganized sector means what is that 92% unorganized sector means who are there farmers laborers casual workers bd workers everybody are unorganized you see how much is there our 92% is there 92% and you keep in your mind they will ask you this compulsory should know that a question will come our 100% answer will come differentiate between the organized sector and unorganized sector and you know no clarity organized means government employees unorganized means labor daily wage labors okay that you keep in your mind now i tell you what is organized sector what is organized sector government employees you see what will be their government you know that government employees what you will first one and tell you these people will get minimum wages they'll get minimum wages means government minimum wages means government will fix some salary that salary they'll get 50000 40000 
minimum salary will be there government will fix some minimum salary and rules and regulations will be there for them for organized sector for government employees some rules and regulations will be there time salary extra income so you see one first point i am telling you minimum wages will be there and some rules and regulations will be there in organized sector but unorganized sector no minimum wages no limit no limit for the unorganized sector they can give 200 they can give 400 it is will and wish about the owner and you see salaries will be less in the organized salaries will be less in the unorganized sector and no rules and regulations no rules and regulations means what what are the rules and regulations you see rules and regulations means what i'll tell you here are the rules i'll tell you the organized sector from 9:30 they will come and 5:30 they will go means 8 hours work only they will if they come 10 o'clock means they come 10 o'clock means they will go at 6 o'clock that much only half hours a 10 to 6 8 hours only they should work that is the rule and here for this unorganized sector no time rule if they go to 7 o'clock 7 o'clock only they should come 9 o'clock they will go morning 9 o'clock only they should leave. like that no time bond 8 hours not 10 hours 12 hours they will work and another one government employee paid all day will be there paid all day means sunday will come government employee will take rest paid all day you will get a salary for the sunday but unorganized sector labor people who are under the construction work or anything any work they are doing if they work they will get a pay sunday they sit in the house a unorganized person sunday is sit, sat in the house he will not get the wages for the sunday and another one is wages means what wages means what is the wages means daily giving the money after completing the work evening only they will give the money that is called as wages daily payment for the labor is called as wages salary is not like that salary means monthly after completing the month they will give salary and here organized sector you will get regularly salary after completing the month you will get a salary but there evening you will get evening you will get or one month and three days they will stop six days they will come stop you see that is about that one and another one you see organized sector pension will be there provident fund will be there retirement pension will be there health schemes will be there you see what are there what they are giving pension is there after retirement they will get a pension health schemes when is working when is working and anything happen means free treatment by the government hospital pensions and health schemes insurance provident fund this all will be there for this person but in the unorganized sector nothing will be there no provident fund no pension no nothing no nothing no rules and regulations no salary limit salary is not there so like this this will be there so you keep in your mind how many rules are there you see ones for organized sector rules and regulations minimum pay minimum wages minimum wages and you see insurance provident fund retirement pensions will be there and paid holidays will be there and if you take unorganized sector no no paid holidays no pension no nothing and no minimum wage scale and nothing will be there about this organized sector you see these are called and again once again i am telling you what is organized sector organized sector means the person who are working as a government employee or a corporate employee he will come under the organized sector and unorganized sector labor casual workers these people so you see the differences and i am going to tell you about the case study case study tomorrow about that study i'll tell you tomorrow i am going to tell you about why because the time is not there so you see that is about the narsimha government officer and the rajeshwari and you see narsimha a government officer and the rajeshwari is a worker a laborer this one i am going to tell you tomorrow about that one and uh, you see i told you now 92 percent 92 percent what is 92 percent 92 percent is unorganized sector 8 percent is organized sector okay tomorrow we will continue the class and i told you number of times you, second lesson question answers you completed you have completed the second lesson and the second lesson question answers textbook textbook questions only you write textbook questions you write with this i am stopping the class okay thank you